Hi, this is David Abanak Turtle with a review of the Central Counterparty, or CCP. To understand the value of a CCP, we can contrast it to an over-the-counter derivative transaction between two counterparties. So I've got that just illustrated here. Two derivative transactions between two counterparties, counterparty A, counterparty B, and they've entered into two separate derivative transactions. These could be swaps, credit default swaps, foreign exchange forward contracts for that matter. Each of the trans derivative transactions is a bilateral contract between the two counterparties. So making up some numbers here for the first transaction, I'm assuming that the current credit exposure is positive five. This is from the perspective of counterparty A. Positive five means that if counterparty A had to replace this contract, it would cost five. Or if counterparty B were to default, then counterparty A would lose five. So this contract is in the money to counterparty A. And then the other derivative, again, a separate bilateral contract is out of the money or has a value of negative three, meaning it's in the money to counterparty B. Now, without netting, then the potential losses to counterparty A here are given by this formula. So it's just the max of each of the transactions and zero. So from again, from counterparty A's perspective, without netting, the potential loss here is five plus zero, because zero is the max of negative three and zero. So the potential loss here is five, meaning if counterparty B were to default, counterparty A would lose the five that was in the money, but counterparty A would not be able to walk away from this contract. They'd still need to pay this contract. So that's not going to be a good deal. That's going to be much less common. So netting plays a key role in reducing the overall systematic risk and also explains why notional is not the best metric for the overall exposure. With netting, notice the difference here. We max out the summation and then the zero. And so in this case, if there is netting, five minus three is positive two. With netting, the potential loss has been reduced from five to two because if counterparty B defaults, then counterparty A can net the three that's out of money against the five, and it's only gonna lose the two that it was net in the money. So the netting is important, but the role of the central counterparty is really about converting bilateral netting into multilateral netting. So we go back to counterparty A and counterparty B. They enter into the bilateral contract, and let's say instead they're going to use a central counterparty. Now, by way of the legal process novation, that single counter that single contract between them is novated into two contracts. So counterparty A enters into a counterparty with here the central counterparty or the clearinghouse, if you like, and counterparty B similarly enters into a contract with the central counterparty. So now the CCP, the central counterparty, is the structural hub that becomes the counterparty to each of the trading members. And the central counterparty can employ risk management practices specifically collateral requirements, which would include the initial margin and the vari variation margin. If in theory, the central counterparty can offset each of the trades where now with the central hub, each of the members can really effectively indirectly trade with many different counterparties. If the central counterparty can effectively offset each of the trades, they can be market neutral with respect to market risk. And so the key advantage of the central counterparty is the idea that it can reduce systematic risk by instead of the bilateral contract that through counterparty chains propagates systematic risk, instead of that, the central counterparty becomes the counterparty and the means for multilateral netting that's supported with collateral acquirements. Now, the two disadvantages, or there may be more than two, but I'll give you the two primary disadvantages of the central counterparty are one, that in order 
for all of these members to trade with the central counterparty, these derivative instruments need to be somewhat standardized. So this is the idea that the instruments need to be standardized and therefore not all over-the-counter derivatives can trade through the CCP. Standardization is required because there needs to be a common valuation methodology. This counterparty and the central counterparty and this counterparty all need to have a shared common valuation for the derivatives traded. To some degree, these derivatives will need to be standardized. The other key criticism or concern with the central counterparty is the idea that instead of eliminating systematic risk, it now concentrates systematic risk in the central counterparty because now instead of several large broker dealers who could be too big to fail or too interconnected to fail, now consider if the central counterparty itself were to fail, this would be severe systematic crisis. So we haven't necessarily eliminated the idea of too big or too interconnected to fail. We've instead concentrated it into the central counterparty. This is David Harper, the Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.